Lecture. Electron beam therapy is one of the most important part in your first part FRCR exam or the second part of our exa FRCR exam and as well as it is very also useful in daily practice so I thought I will discuss with you today a very simple way of using electron beam and some physical or physical characteristics that is very important that you, you be aware of so that you can use it in your daily your daily uh, work again this is a very primitive for my junior uh, very primitive lecture for my junior colleague colleagues and the senior can stay away we'll discuss how we can generate electron beam from a linear accelerator machine and what does it that has what does this mean in terms of the clinical um, uh, value and the electron beam characteristic which is the most important part in the exam to understand and to know exactly how what is the definitions of this electron beam and then we will go for the clinical use and applications of electron beam maybe this time or in another lecture if you remember during the secondary school we had this very small experiment with a cathode anode and a battery where we are generating or through which we can generate a very uh, low electron current the same way happening in the linear accelerator head where the electron gun generate a very weak electron beam but this electron beam uh, at a range of kvs this cannot be used for daily treatment so we need to take these electrons and accelerate it in the most important part of your linear accelerator hence the name linear accelerator to accelerate the electron inside the accelerator tube there is a waveguide and there is an accelerator tube where the electron can reach a very high speed and and power and this will happen exactly the same way as we are doing in in wind surfer maybe many of you are doing wind surfers and when you jump on the waves with the winds you may take a very high speed up to 100 120 kilometer per hour that you can reach a very high speed a very similar way we will mount the electron on a very high frequency microwaves inside the accelerator tube forth and coming forth and coming then the electron will acquire a very high speed up to the speed of light at a certain point we will release the electron outside the electron uh, uh, the accelerator tube and it will give you give us what we call it the high high energy electron beam and then you bend it through the magnet and whatever magnetic head and there is a different uh, different way of uh, moving or directing your your uh, electron electron beam but the most important part i want you to be aware is the following the first that first point is that the electron beam when it comes out from the accelerator tube it's around three millimeter in diameter so it's not useful as for as a kind of a beam to be to treat it to treat to use it for treatment so you need to 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 put it or to spread it on what we call the scattering foil so that you can get the useful beam you can also get the x-ray beam through hitting the electron beam to the thick tungsten target what we call it the brem strahlung radiation maybe you remember that brem is break is a as a german word name mean meaning break so you break your the brake of your car the hand brake brem is a break and strahlung is radiation so brem strahlung radiation is the radiation produced from stopping the electron by hitting a thick z material tungsten target and through which we generate the the brem strahlung radiation if we remove the tungsten thick target away and we allow the electron beam to go through the scattering foil then you get what you call it the electron beam you may say that with the scattering foil you may get also some bremsstrahlung radiation with interaction of electron with the collimator or diodes the chamber the ion chamber in the pathway of electron all this can generate some kind of x-ray contamination and this will be reflected at the tail of the percentage depth dose of electron beam and we will come to this later later on so the what is the importance of this why you're telling us this whole story i want to tell you this whole story because in the different machines different vendors the 
the design of the head of the machine, the way we generate the electrons is different from one machine to another. And this makes the parameter or the beam characteristics for the electron machine for the electron beam differ from one machine to another. You cannot use the parameters in your department and whenever you move to another department you, you use the same parameter. You cannot do that unfortunately. So for each machine you will have to ask your physics team what is the parameters for your electron beam where is the table for electron beam with each field size has different percentage depth dose has the x-ray contamination how much where is the maximum dose where is the 90 percent ice dose line will be and so on so we have to be aware that in any machine there is a difference in the beam characteristics in the energy can be 6 8 12 16 like even numbers it can be 6 9 15 like odds numbers you have to be aware or you orient yourself whenever you go to a new department what kind of energies and what is the beam characteristics for your for your uh, electron beam the second point in is the most important part of the lecture is the electron beam characteristics the shape of the electron beam i would like you to get a pen and paper and draw the electron beam so that you can feel the difference between the percentage depth dose ice dose line on the left side for electrons and percentage depth dose for the photons on the left side it's very obvious the difference and there is no way you can mistake in the difference or you can be confused with that that surface dose for the photon on the right side is very low the surface dose of electron on the left side is in the range of 70 percent 80 percent 90 percent and you will notice that on the left side that the higher the energy of the electron beam the more dose on the surface will be and this is a very a crucial difference between photons and electron because sometimes with high energy electron you may not use you use bolus at all because you don't have to because the dose on the surface in the 90 90s or the 90s percent maybe it's enough for you uh, as it is on the surface and you don't want to increase it more than that so it's very important to understand this physical characteristics that electron beam number one electron beam dose of the surface is higher than that of the foot the second point i want you to notice in the percentage depth dose on the left side that if you draw a line from the 90 percent ice dose line like a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis you will see that you are hitting the uh, the uh, the ice dose line in two points one is called the proximal 90 percent and one is called the distal 90 percent after which there is a sudden and sharp drop off of the curve i don't know if you can see my cursor or not but if you cannot see it you can put your your pen on the ice dose line and move the cursor along the ice dose line so that you can feel it horizontal line from the 90 percent will reach one point of the curve and the second point of the curve one point in the curve second point in the curve and so on so you have to understand or i want you just to keep it in your mind now because we will use it later on that we have a distal and proximal and we usually prescribe our our our, our energy based on the fact that i want my target to be within this area within the area of high dose in uh, within the curve because outside this region there will be a sharp drop of the of the energy as you can see from the the high the, the steepness of the electron beam curve the second point that you, i would like you to know that the maximum dose on the surface also is not <coughs> cannot be predicted the same way as we are doing in photon beam you remember when we talked about the 100 percent ice dose line of the electron beam i told you you have like a rule of thumb for photon sorry you have a rule of thumb so for kv machines the surface dose would be 100 percent at zero cobalt is 0 0.5 6 mv 1.5 10 mv 2.5 3.5 and this is a very important exam question by the way and you have to keep it in your mind 0 0.5 1.5 2.5 3.5 and 4 mv 1 centimeter as nowadays there is a rarely to see a linear accelerator of 4 mv 
but in the past there was uh, many of that so I would just put it for academic reason and make it uh, in a, a completion of uh, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2.5, 3.5 but the same cannot be applied in electron beam so if you want to ask me where is the 100% of the 6 MeV I would like to review it with my physics colleague and tell you let's look at the ice dose line charts I dose line curves and get it if you don't have your electron beam commissioned as in many UK centers and I'm sure that many of the UK centers doesn't have the electron beam commissioned on the planning system and they still use the the tables so I would like you to look at the tables whether it's an excel file that you ask for it or you look at it if it's printed out so the hundred percent for 6 MeV for 9 MeV you have to know it from the tables of your machine there is a, a rough rule of thumb called a multiply your energy or nominal energy by two so if i have six mv mev multiplied by two we are calling 12 mm so 12 mm can be the 100% uh, depth the depth of the 100% iso dose line which is a rough idea or rough method of calculating 9 MeV multiplied by 2 this will give you 18 M, M, M millimeter from the surface and so on but this is a very rough idea rough methods of calculation I wouldn't recommend it but I would just uh, in, in terms that you, you want to remind yourself that the 100% for the low energy electron beam is not uh, on the surface this rule of thumb may not apply for the high energies because it's not uh, uh, the same as the photon as I said so the depth may be the 100% may be very close to the surface uh, in the high energy in high energy electron beam so this is a very fundamental or very crucial difference between the photon and the electron there is nothing called the Bragg peak in in electron beam so please don't confuse I don't know maybe the stress of the oral exam or what sometimes they say what is this tail in the percentage depth dose of an electron they give it to you and then you first he will tell you this is an ice dose line uh, of which type of of energy and you will tell him looks this is a steep curve and this looks like an electron and then he can ask you a few questions about the rp r50 rx and r100 r90 and so on and then comes to the last point and tell you what is this you tell him this is an x-ray contamination this is not a black peak the black peak is the in proton maybe you can have another lecture with proton beam therapy where there is uh, the, the, the deposition of the energy at the end of the curve. The dose on the surface of proton is also different and there is also a lot of concern regarding the dose on the skin dose in proton beam therapy, but not the case of uh, electron beam. So there is a major difference between both. So please don't just be confused. I know it's a stupid or silly uh, 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 note, but in the exam, I don't know what's, what's going on so this is the ice dose line of the electron beam and what we are aiming for is to include our target within the 90 percent ice dose line so what i mean by including my target is that the volume to be treated will be encompassed completely and you have to ensure that it is encompassed completely by the 90 percent ice dose line sometimes we can prescribe on the 80 percent ice dose line sometimes i prescribe to say 70 percent ice dose line when would you do that whenever you have a very critical structure underneath for example in a chest wall radiotherapy using electron beam the lung is underlying the chest wall so you have to be very careful in measuring the dose required to cover the chest wall without accessing or without increasing the dose toxicity toward the lung because the electron will spread in the lung more than you would expect you would expect the 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 the, the, the the electron beam to lose 2 MeV per centimeter of uh, of tissue water equivalent but not the case of the lung the lung the air the air is a very is very weak and the electron beam will reach a very 
uh, a high uh, uh, volume or for of the lung if you did you don't calculate your volume uh, properly so it's very important to know exactly how what which ice dose line you are prescribing for in general we prescribe to the 90 percent ice dose line if the underneath structure is not that important or maybe if you are putting a protector there like a lead protection and this will also prevent the dose from going to underneath the normal risk structure but 70 percent ice dose line and 80 percent ice those line can be also used for prescription the easiest way to to choose your energy is one of two things two methods i would say if you, one is to measure how much how how much uh, is your volume like how how centimeter deep is your volume is it the thickness of your your volume is it two centimeter is it three centimeter is it four centimeter and you multiply the thickness by by four you multiply the thickness by four let's say the volume in front of me now is a three centimeter thick i am saying volume i didn't say tumor and i will come to this point later on so then you i would say so this is a three centimeter i want to be covered by the 90 percent isos line three centimeter time four this will need 12 mev uh, 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 mev electron beam energy the other way around is also true if you want if he give you the energy like if you say this is a 16 mev electron beam where will be the 90 percent ice dose line you can divide this by four so the 16 mev divided by four it will be at four centimeter as you can see on the right side the scale showing you that the 90 percent ice dose line very close to the four if you want the 80 percent ice dose line of the 16 mev you divide the energy the nominal energy by three so it's either you divide the nominal energy by four to give you the 90 percent ice dose line depth or you divide the energy by three which will give you the 80 percent ice dose depths for example 16 divided by uh, 3 will be 5.3 so it's very close as you can see in the graph as well that is very close to the 5 centimeter depth 80 percent ice dose line and this is a very crucial and important uh, point there is uh, another way of doing things again i'm just giving you different examples to tell you that any any way of calculating method just use it and stick to it and and most probably it is correct another way of doing things if you want to 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 calculate the average average depth between the 80 and 90 percent ice dose line for your energy you can multiply it by three as well so so i said so does not you be confused the energy divided by by four will give you the depth of the 90 percent ice dose line the energy divided by three will give you the depth of the 80 percent ice dose line if you calculating the thickness of the volume of the, your target then you can multiply by four to get the 90 percent ice dose line depth it's a it's a cross cross uh, uh, calculation you know it's a, it's a very simple you can divide or you can multiply based on the information you have what i'm saying here i'm giving you an, a very simple method to to give you an average estimate about the depth of the 80 to 90 percent which is multiplying the energy the nominal energy by three as you can see here from the table let's say let's take the 9 mev i want to know where is the depth how much will be the 90 percent ice dose line how much depth will cover the 90 percent ice dose line if you multiply 9 by 3 this will give you 27 mm back to the the original uh, method when we divide the energy by 3 or divide the energy by 2 as you can see from the table dividing the energy by 3 it's 3 centimeter dividing the energy by 4 it's 2.25 uh, centimeter so 27 is an average between the two figures so it's a kind of a rough idea about so it's, i don't think it's wrong to use it but if you want to use the 4 or use the 3 i would say it's it's of value the idea by using the three is because nowadays there is a very with the new machines there is what they call it a special kind of collimator that make the 80 and 90 percent ice dose line very close to each other so if you if you look at carefully at the tables you have in your department you may have one of these new machines where the 80 percent ice dose line you divide 
the the uh, you divide by the the energy the nominal energy by by three and if you want the 80 percent isotope line you divide the nominal energy by 2.8 centimeter 2.8 so it's very very close so the multiplication of three is coming from kind of a rough uh, method of calculating your your depth in a quick way or if you want for example to like draw a curve and and put your 100% while you're doing a viva or a quick kind of uh, estimation so you have different method in your mind and you can use it easily to give you 80 to 90 percent ice dose line uh, depths so this is our aim this is our aim. Our, aim our aim is to cover my target volume with the 90 percent or maybe the 100 percent isos line whatever you want but what i want here to emphasize that please think three dimension if your tumor thickness is two centimeter don't forget that you need at least half a centimeter or one centimeter at depth so when you calculate the volume to be treated you will have the tumor thickness which is two centimeter you will have one centimeter depth as a margin or like 0.5 centimeter as a margin or a few millimeter if there is like a natural barrier or whatever i just want you to don't forget that the thickness including the thickness of the tumor that you are measuring using your ruler like clinically or using your uh, ct scan if you have a ct scan uh, planning ct scan or like uh, a scan diagnostic scan and you are measuring your tumor but please don't forget that you want to take a margin at depth so the margin at depth will be calculated in the thickness to be treated so if i have a tumor of two centimeter and one centimeter as a depth as a margin then this will make it one centimeter so if i want to get the 90 percent isos line coverage i will multiply three times four this will be at least 10 12 mev but if you added another thing called for example a bolus of one centimeter for any reason of, or agreed by the physics that you will have a, add a, an 8 mm bolus or a, you will add a one centimeter bolus then the bolus as well will be added in your volume to be treated so two centimeter and one centimeter and 0.8 the total volume to be treated will be 3.8 centimeter and then if you multiply this by four you can get an average of like 15 or uh, 16 mev if you have like a choice between like 12 and 15 and 16 and you don't find any problem of using the higher energy i usually use the higher energy without any kind of hesitation unless unless i know there is a risk structure that i want to protect as i said before you can reduce the the prescription and the dose and the energy of your beam as well so please don't forget that the depth should be included in the thickness and the bolus should be included in the thickness as a final calculation of your energy to be used whether you multiply you multiply by four or multiply by three whatever you want the second important point i would like to emphasize is what we call it and you can write it down with me the lateral constriction of the eyes dose line in the high dose region at depth the lateral constriction of the eyes dose line in the high dose region at depth what does it mean if you look at the eyes dose line in front of you okay so you will see that the, in the low energies like 10 percent 20 percent look from below upward 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent there is what we call it bowing bowing like the electron beam is bowing outside the field so if i measure like the 20 percent ice dose line and i measure from side to side how much is the weights you will see that the weights of the 20 percent ice dose line is wider than the 10 by 10 field size or the green dimension you can see it easily here that the field the light field on the surface is less in size than the bowing electron beam but this is happening in the low energies only and please bowing of electron beam is happening at depth in the low energy region in the 30s 40s 50s but not in the 90s and 180s you can look at the 90 percent ice dose line please look at the 90 percent ice dose line and take it from and put your cursor from the surface at the level of the green line okay and then move with the 90 percent ice dose line and your cursor down 
look what is happening to the 90% ice dose line the ice dose line is not moving perpendicular it's not moving vertical instead it's moving towards the towards the the inside so if you measure now at the at the the flat part at the distal end of the 90% ice dose line if you measure the 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 the, the distance between the 80% ice dose line or the 90% ice dose line compare this green lower green line with the upper light field green line it's definitely smaller this is what we call it constriction of the ice dose line in the high dose region at depth and this is a very important part please because this is kind of you want you want your target to be covered by the 90 percent or 80 percent ice dose line so if you look at the surface I've, after marking you mark your gtv you mark your ctv like one centimeter margin of the ctv you end up by this blue box for example and then you look at the light field and you see oh, okay this blue box is covered properly by my light field but in fact and at depth this blue box is not covered which represents your tumor this blue box is not covered properly by the 90 percent ice dose line because the 90 percent ice dose line is constricting is constricting is constricting at depth and so this phenomena is a very important phenomena in electron beam therapy and please don't say there is because there is a penumbra don't know where is the penumbra here the 90 percent ice dose line constrict the 80 percent ice dose line constrict the 100 percent ice dose line constrict at depth so that's why when you mark your target you mark your gtv you take a margin as a ctv whether a ctv will be like half a centimeter if you are dealing with a basal cell carcinoma two centimeter if you are using or if you are dealing with merkel cell carcinoma or one centimeter if you are dealing with squamous cell carcinoma and then after that because this is your ctv you need full dose of your ctv after that you will add 8 mm or 1 centimeter to allow for the lateral constriction of the ice dose line in the high dose region so you, you tell your physics team so how much should i allow for the constriction of the ice dose line at depth it's based on field size it's based on the energy and it's very important to discuss this with your physics team so you are now like a physics man you are an electron beam expert you can tell them okay now this is my CTV, this is my GTV, and this is my CTV. Now, I want to allow for the lateral constriction of the ice dose line. How much should I take? Should I take 6 mm? Should I take 8 mm? Should I pick 1 centimeter? And this is a very important part. To the extent that in a very small field, as you can see here, this is a very beautiful graph from Perez um, and Brady you can see here in the upper part of the of the photo there is a very small field three by three centimeter the electron beam 90% ice dose line is losing its flatness it's as if it's a pencil beam like this cannot be used in clinical practice and that's why we have a minimum field size to be used in electron beam because of excess constriction you, it will tell you or the book will tell you you can the minimum field size in electron beam you can use is three by three that's fine three by three but there is a very important information you have to read it very carefully and you may miss it that the collimation should happen on the skin your lead should happen on the skin you are focusing your electron on the skin as you can see in the lower graph in the lower graph the thick black uh, 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 thick black lines there these are the collimated skin this is the, the 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 lead is on on the skin and this is what we call it uh, a skin collimation uh, 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 field so you 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 have to this this cannot be done like this you cannot do this field three by three or without discussing this with your physics team you may use completely your flatness you may have 
a severe constriction of the 90% ice dose line and some centers I'm aware of some centers they don't they do not allow uh, electron beam field less than four centimeters so you have to discuss it with your beam your your physics team and please don't forget that in some center along three by three centimeter minimum field size necessitate again necessitate a collimation on the skin and this needs full discussion with your with your physics team but it's a very tricky and important point the last part of the the lecture i wanted to talk about i think be, um, there is a lot of things we need to discuss but i think it's uh, too much now I think the uh, the the one I would like to uh, uh, talk about is what we call it the protection used for the normal tissue. How much? How much would you? How much thickness of lead is needed to protect your normal tissue? So, for example, I'm using a sixteen MeV. And uh, and I want to protect the normal tissue to the maximum. I don't want my I don't want my uh, I don't want my um, normal tissue to receive any dose. How much should I use? Uh, how thick should I use uh, my uh, uh, my um, uh, lead? The the golden rule of thumb is saying that energy nominal energy divided by two. Nominal energy divided by two. So if you have 16 MeV divided by two, this will be eight mm lead thickness you need. And we always, or you usually, in most of the books, will add another one mm for more safety. So it will be eight MeV and add another one mm for safety. You will end up by nine MeV. In some centers, they use one centimeter for all, and that's it. So they don't bother calculating it. But you you may need to calculate it when you need a certain thickness of the lead to be inserted in a narrow area. For example, under your lip. For example, under there is no space under your lip, and you will need to cover the lead by by a wax. And this wax may. Uh, have a will have will have a thickness and so you may suffer from like that you need to calculate the thickness of the lead uh, properly uh, so that you can insert it in a proper way but the golden rule or the rule of thumb for protection for electron beam is e divided by two and add one will give you the thickness in millimeters so if we are talking about let's say 12 mev then 12 divided by two equal six exactly so six mm lead is a minimum add one for safety it will be seven mm for a minimum in the market you will have the 0.5 mm uh, lead and you can that usually the sheet come with 0.5 mm and uh, you um, and you uh, can add two together to get uh, a one centimeter thickness it's very difficult to get like the seven uh, millimeter and so on there is also what we call it the seroband and the seroband is a very common uh, uh, MCQ question. It comes to you in the form of what is the the Lipovets metal, Lipovets metal or seroband. It's under the name of Lipos, Lipovets, L-I-P-O-W-I-T-Z metal or seroband metal. And the composition of this seroband also come in the MCQ, unfortunately, it is it has a uh, bismuth and lead and tin and cadmium again bismuth b l t c b l t c b l t c belt c belt c whatever you want to remember it's belt c belt c belt c belt c seroband lipovets or belt c unfortunately it comes in the exam why we are using the seroband compared to the lead one because the melting point is 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 less so it is it you can shape it easily number two that you uh, the, the 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 vapors is less toxic so it's not toxic as in the lead uh, but the most important information you have to be aware of that the seroban density is 12 percent less than the lead which means that you need to add extra thickness 
if you are calculating one so you add another 12 percent thickness for the cerumen to get the same protection this is a very important part in in clinical practice I would recommend that you ask your uh, mold room team to do like full range of cerubens. You don't have to do specific for each patient. You do circular, you do circular cerubens, you do uh, squares, you do different measures square, and then you try to adapt or use the uh, the pre-made cerubend in your field. And this will be the easiest way of doing things. Just adding few points quickly, quickly, um, just to uh, maybe increase the value of this lecture. One is the value of the uh, bolus in irregular surface. Electron beam is is not happy with any irregular surface. So don't try to treat patients with irregular surfaces. Try to flatten the surface. So if you're talking about an ear, you need to make it flat. You uh, I need to full add full. Uh, wax uh, or, or a bolus material by the way there is two types of wax in the market there is what we call it the b wax and there is something called paraffin wax interestingly the b wax has a, a better density than the paraffin wax so please with your physics team when you use the paraffin wax ask them what is the density of your paraffin wax? Is it 0 0.8? Is, is it 8? Is it uh, uh, 0 0.8 close to 1 or less? The the B wax is is better. There is also the the the, the pre-made uh, bolus materials there you, that you can use. Uh, so the regular surfaces, the electron beam is not happy with any irregular surface. As you can see here, with if there is a sharp irregular surface, you may end up by hot spots at the edge of the of the 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 the, the proximal part of the of the field, and you can also have a, a, a cold spot at the distal part of the field. As you can see in the upper part of the graph, you have a hot spot where there is a defect and you have a cold spot where there is the thickness of a bolus or any irregular surface. This example is a very critical example in patients with chest wall radiotherapy. When you use the chest wall radiotherapy and have a regular shape on the surface, you're trying to, to make it smoother by using different boluses. So the recommendation here or what the image or the graph is trying to tell you is to try to, 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 to not, not to use a sharp edge of the, the bolus material try to to incline the surface by a certain angle like 45 degree as you can see from the lower graph and this will avoid the hot spot what you can see in it way 100 percent 20 percent and also avoid the cold spot to happen this is a very important point electron beam is not happy i usually say it like that electron beam is not happy with irregular surfaces if you are gonna use boluses to make it smooth then please uh, uh, make it in the form of angle edge don't use a sharp edge for your bolus so the pre-made boluses may not be very nice you may need to smooth it and make it as angled beveled uh, edge to be at the adjunction region of the the uh, adjunction region between the the shallow part of the chest uh, the chest wall in a very interesting uh, photo as well from uh, Perez and Brady you can see the effect of the air when you treat when you treat uh, like an ear uh, tumor with um, electron beam um, it is interesting that he saying that you fill the canal, the electron beam canal, with uh, saline. I really don't know, but I didn't use it. It's really a very smart idea. Then you put saline inside the canal and then you close it with, with bee wax. Um, in many centers, we try to use the bee wax and honestly, it's never ideal. So I think the idea of the saline is not bad at all. If you can do it, if the patient is lying on one side and you'll fill the canal with some amount of uh, fluid like a water or uh, something and then you close it with your wax, maybe this is an important part. As you can see, the arrow is showing what we call the 140% isodose line hotspot as a result of the 
ear in the ear canal and this may increase the dose to the middle uh, to the inner ear here after correction still there is 120 but this is because of the irregularity of the surface but not because of the lack of air this is a very interesting the electron beam is not happy electron beam is not happy with air electron beam is not happy with irregular surface electron beam is not happy with irregular surface there is a very interesting ice dose line you can see the difference between the air the presence of air or mist part and the presence of uh, like irregular air water or water air and this is a very uh, important when we are talking about like chest wall radiotherapy it's of extreme importance to important to review exactly what kind of difference in depth in the ice dose line and there is a lot of chest walls where you can see a lot of irregularities after the operation and you don't know really what to do on it so please discuss it with your physics team and don't use it in a simple way because the the results or the outcome may be catastrophic at the end this is the most important curve in exam and electron beam you have to know these definitions by heart it's very simple and easy but please you have to know it by heart r q r max r p r90 we talked about the r90 but we didn't talk about the r50 the r50 is a very simple way just divide your nominal energy by 2.33 or in some center you just divide it by two to get what we call it the practical range or r50 range the idea is when you know the r50 where is the r50 you know that after that the dose of the electron dose is very like negligible it's not of value for you so you just be like give you a peace of mind okay this is the r50 a 6 mev the r50 divided uh, 6 divided by 2 the r50 will be around 3 centimeter that's fine so after 3 centimeter most probably the under Lying structure is safe and is not in a big trouble and this is of value as well this curve is very very important the the blue line you can see here is nothing but the area where you want to put your target and we discuss this in details please this curve you have to be aware how to draw it and you have to be aware of all definitions on this curve for your exam I'm sorry if uh, it was a bit of a long um, lecture, but I thought I'd just give it another push and thank you very, uh, very, very much.